Hi, I'm Jim Ryman. I'm the Chair of Graphic Design and Photography here at Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. Today I'll be shooting with a Canon R with a 100mm macro lens and I am using continuous lights just to show the manual settings in effect. Today we're going to talk about the exposure triangle. The first part of that being your ISO, the second part being your aperture, and the third part being your shutter speed. The first part of the exposure triangle that we're going to talk about today is the ISO, and that's essentially the sensitivity to light. On this particular camera, I can go from ISO 100 all the way out to 40,000. And you can see in this situation, it is blowing out quite a bit when I put it at 40,000 because it's just, it's receiving the light so quickly. The next part of the exposure triangle is your aperture. And the aperture is actually the opening inside the lens. Those settings are called f-stops. This particular lens can go from 2.8 all the way out to f32. The aperture is really important because if you're a portrait photographer, typically you want to shoot more open so the backgrounds are blurred out and less distracting. But if you're a landscape photographer, you're going to shoot more closed so you get all that detail. The last part of the exposure triangle is your shutter speed. The shutter speed can be a fraction of a second out to full seconds, minutes, even longer. So if you're shooting sports and you have people moving, you're going to want to shoot at a faster shutter speed in order to freeze that motion. If you're doing something like star trails or light painting, then you'd want to use your slower shutter speeds. So now that you know all three parts of the exposure triangle, now we're going to put them together. And to do that, we're going to use the in-camera light meter. This is a reflected light meter that measures the light bouncing off the subject. The light meter uses the ISO as its point of measurement. It knows that the sensor receives light this fast. So I have it at 100, so it knows that the sensor is not very sensitive at the moment. When I put this out here, you can see I'm at plus two stops when I'm at 30 seconds. That's a little strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back off my exposure until I get that light meter closer to the middle. If we measure it just a third of a stop under zero, we get a nice exposure. It's all a, a give and take between the three points of the exposure triangle. Understanding the exposure triangle is what separates the hobbyist photographers from the pros. My advice for all beginning photographers is to get to know your camera settings in and out. Make sure you know how to use your aperture, how to use your shutter speed, and your ISO when you need to, so you can get the results that you're looking for. To learn more about what we have to offer, go to www.rimcad.edu.